With me now is Sarah Gallagher, president of the Canadian Astronomical Society and professor of physics and astronomy at Western University. Good morning. Thanks so much for being with us. So are you Good excited? Morning. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great day. I'm very excited. So what is it that you're most looking forward to? Well, I like all of, all of the bits. So the whole event uh, takes about two hours and it's sort of this slow buildup where the sky gets darker and darker and bigger and bigger chunks get taken out of the sun. And then right at that moment of totality, it's just, it's just fantastic because the whole disk of the sun is covered by the moon. And then all of a sudden, it's, it's, you can see the corona, the giant rays of the sun across the sky. And it's just really spectacular. Have you seen one before? Have you experienced one before? Yes, I was really lucky. Uh, in 2017, I was in Idaho for the last uh, total solar eclipse and we had just perfect weather and it was gorgeous. Yeah, what was it like? Because a lot of people say it, it's really something you feel right to your core. I, I totally agree. I was there with my kids who are seven and 10 at the time and they also felt that moment where, I mean, they literally said, this is awesome. <laughs> and it it's just spectacular. And you also, you feel it in this very visceral way. We were, uh, we were in Idaho, so the air was quite dry, which meant when it was completely dark that you could feel the temperature drop very dramatically. So it's something you feel in your whole body. Wow, okay, so let's walk through the time frame then in Ontario to witness the eclipse because it kind of varies from region to region. That's right. So the shadow is actually moving very quickly, about 2,000 kilometers per, per, uh, per hour across the, uh, from west to east. And so uh, that means that the further west, you're going to see the total eclipse a little bit earlier. And so, uh, yep, as you, as you can see on the screen, so around um, 318 in Hamilton, that's when it's going to hit. And you can see it's a few minutes later as you go further east, um, even into eastern Canada, where it's quite a bit later. And so what are the different phases to this eclipse? So what happens first is that you'll see uh, it looks like a bite has been taken out of the sun and it will be completely black on one side of the sun. And then that bite gets bigger and bigger and bigger. If you're not actually looking at it with glasses, of course, so you can be safe. You might not even notice uh, as it gets as it starts, because we're used to the brightness of the sun changing a little bit from clouds and things like that. But as it gets closer and closer, it's quite dramatic. A lot of the sun will be um, will be covered, and so it will get quite a bit darker. Right before totality, there's this cool moment, which is called the diamond ring, when just a little part of the disk is covered, um, is still is still open, and that will glow and look very bright like a diamond. And then that will slowly fade away, and then the whole disk is covered. And then that's when you're able to see the corona because all of a sudden, not only is the disk of the sun covered, but all of the light that usually scatters off the molecules in our atmosphere also goes away. So the sky gets very dark. And that's why we're able to see the corona, which is millions of times fainter than the disk of the sun. Amazing. And, and, then, and you mentioned um, that the temperature drops. Yes. Uh, well, it, de it depends. Um, if it's very humid, you might not notice it as much because the air isn't as sensitive to the lack of light. But if, it's, uh, if the air is drier, you'll definitely feel it get quite a bit cooler. Sarah Gallagher, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, we're all really pumped about this today. Sarah Gallagher is the president of the Canadian Astronomical Society and professor of physics and astronomy at Western University.